Translation has been around for many thousands of years, probably since the first languages started appearing. People have always needed to communicate with each other and translation has played an integral part in this. But translation isn't limited to just speaking to someone. Even in ancient times, written translations of important documents, laws and king's orders were very important. Archaeologists have uncovered ancient stone tablets like the Rosetta Stone containing the same text written in several languages. These translations represent the very first of what we now call parallel texts and have been crucial in helping modern scientists decipher ancient languages. In modern times, the need to be able to translate is still with us. We live in a global village and international trade, business and foreign travel is becoming more and more prevalent in our lives. And as we travel and do business, we encounter other languages. Now, we can of course learn to speak and read and write in these languages, but that's time consuming, not to mention more difficult for some people than others. And of course, there are many thousands of languages in the world. To help us with this, highly skilled translators work to help us overcome language barriers using lots of linguistic know-how and an array of computerized language tools and dictionaries to help them work faster and more efficiently. But with so much material to be translated these days, our translation needs are growing faster than the translation industry can keep up. Automating even some of this work would mean that the skilled translators could focus on what really matters and not be slowed down by repetitive translation tasks. An automatic translation engine also means that you and I can avail of cheap or even free translation for ourselves when we need it, meaning we'd only need to pay for high quality translations. So automatic translation tools make life easier for translators and help bring costs down. Scientists have been working on automatic translation tools since the Second World War. At the time, it was thought that translating into another language was just like cracking an enemy code. And there were plenty of people around who were good at that. So this should be pretty simple, right? Wrong. Human language is very different to code breaking. For starters, it's incredibly complex. So the computers at the time just didn't have the power to handle this. These days, our computers are thousands of times more powerful than back then. And with modern programming and algorithms, computer scientists have developed computer systems that can learn about data that is fed to them. In fact, things have improved so much that computer systems are now able to learn how to translate automatically between languages if you give them the right data. These systems, like us at school, don't always produce perfect translations, but they're quick, inexpensive to run, and unlike some of us at school, they're eager to learn more and improve once they're given the right data. What's more, they can learn lots of languages all at once. These massively multilingual automatic translation systems hold huge potential to help us tackle our rising translation needs. But the interesting bit is that the driving force behind teaching these systems how to translate is something that's been around since ancient times. Remember parallel texts like the Rosetta Stone? Using this kind of data and modern statistical analysis algorithms, the computers can learn how to translate new words, sentences, and phrases that it's never seen before. So, for example, if our parallel text contains the sentences, I talk to the dog, and they talk to the girl, and their French translations, je parle en chien, and il parle à la fille, then the computer can learn from this data and then translate a sentence it has never seen before, like, I talk to the girl. This is a very simple example, but when we apply this technique and use probability statistics to learn from large parallel texts, what the computer learns is very powerful and flexible and able to translate very accurately. Of course, this technique makes some mistakes, but these can be corrected using existing automatic tools like grammar checkers, which pick up small errors and inconsistencies in the output before giving final translations. So you see, by using an idea that was useful in ancient times, we can take this same type of data and now train modern computers to translate human language automatically. What's more, these computer systems aren't limited to translating just written text. Once they've learned how to do the translation, these machine translation systems can be combined with another computer system that recognizes or synthesizes human speech and you get a computer system that actually speaks another language. All you need to teach the computer to translate between two languages is the right data and its counterpart in another language. 
You might well wonder, where do you get this data, these parallel texts? And that's a very important question, because the better the data, the better the computer will perform. Thankfully, because so much work has been done translating between languages, these parallel texts exist all around us already. For example, many websites provide the same content in different languages for us to choose. Books, newspapers and magazines are also translated into multiple languages. So there are plenty of parallel texts from which the computer can learn. And even with very little data, the statistical algorithms can make an educated guess in cases where such data is sparse or not available at all. Now, before you think we've got it all sewn up and that the Universal Translator from Star Trek or the Babelfish from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy are now a reality, it's important to know that as great as the output from a machine translation is, things aren't quite that perfect. Machine translation tools, like what we've been talking about, are not a replacement for a human translator on an important job, but they are a very powerful tool to make their job easier, faster and less expensive. In the same way a carpenter might have an electric saw and a nail gun, he'll still use a hammer or cut timber by hand for the parts of the job where the power tools are unsuitable. The same is true for translation. The machine can do an awful lot, but not everything.